Okay, hello and welcome along to our cloud demonstration today. Uh, as you can see from the screen behind me, we're looking to launch a, some of the cloud services on the Amazon Web Services or AWS. Do a quick Google search for it, uh, it'll come up straight away for you. Uh, Amazon very handily um, have several videos and tutorials to make it as easy as possible for you to launch a cloud account using their services. So they're well, well worth having a look at those tutorials. Now, if we go up to the top right hand side, you can see where the mouse cursor is. We want to try and launch the management uh, console. And as we've just logged in here, so you can see several items in front of you, computing and networking and database and storage and analytics and so on and so forth. Within that, what we're really worried or more concentrating on for this demonstration is the EC2 instance in compute and networking. And that's an elastic compute instance. So we're launching effectively servers someplace around the world. Uh, we've specified Ireland or their data center in Ireland. And they're just going to launch these virtual instances in the cloud for us, which is exactly what we want. And this is IaaS, infrastructure as a service, fully elastic, fully scalable, as many services as we want, or servers, as much as we're willing to pay. In this specific instance, what we're going to be looking at are micro instances of a server. Now for the first, I think it's two months, uh, these instances will be free of charge. Um, and free obviously is a relative term here, depends on bandwidth, so on and so forth, that's going to be coming into you. Okay, and we'll go through that a little bit more uh, at a later stage. Now what we're looking at on the screen as we go through is an Amazon machine image. So we're migrating uh, into the platform as a service side of things. And it's asking us what type of operating system do we want to place in our platform. And as soon as we choose this, it will just launch for us. Now within that, there's no licensing. So if you're using Windows, if you're using Linux, uh, it just it will just load straight on your instruction, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit or whatever it is that you've chosen. The community AMI that we're looking at at the moment is an Amazon machine image, a community image, so to speak. Now this is very, very handy when you're going to be using popular deployments, such as what we're looking at today, which in this case is Joomla. So Joomla is an open source, free to use content management system, and we're going to be putting our library system into this, this CMS. Okay, so when you choose that, you can do a search to see if anyone else has done something similar. In this case, they have, which is perfect. We select. Once that's selected, we are now moving through the screens that Amazon are going to provide us into what type of instance do we want to choose. Now, as we just said, we're going to be looking at a micro instance, which has free, free tier eligibility. Uh, has two ECUs, which we're just highlighting now, or elastic compute units. This is a very, very small fraction of a, of a single processor, but it would be absolutely enough to load up a version of our operating system, uh, to load Joomla, and to import our database of potentially several thousand various library books. There would be no problem uh, running that type of website with uh, a two EC, uh, ECU. Okay, you can see there we've got half a gig of RAM, or just over half a gig. Also, we have very low network performance. And what we're saying here is we're not expecting a huge amount of traffic to be through this website. Absolutely though, it would handle several hundred requests uh, per day from, from students or from customers. Not necessarily on a streaming service, we'd need to move up to, more, uh, to moderate, but if we're just hiring books and checking out books uh, and returning eBooks or something to that effect, very low will be absolutely fine. Now, if we scroll down from micro instance, you can go up the server list quite quickly uh, and costs can go up quite quickly as well to, to several tens of thousands per month. So if you are messing around in this area and you have provided credit card details, do be quite careful. Keep quite a close eye on what you've been billed for. Before you go to launch your instance, just make sure that you're happy with all the details that you've provided uh, to Amazon. Okay, so we've just launched an instance uh, and actually before it goes live, we're looking to, we've been asked to review it. So you can see the AMI details on the middle of the screen towards the left hand side. Tell us that it's Joomla. It gives us the installation version, which is reasonably important from the perspective of certain versions of software may have issues with different Joomla builds and the, the numbers will be specific to the, the builds it's having a problem with. You can see that it's Linux we've built it on, the operating system, uh, the microserver, the ECUs, 
the amount of RAM that we're going to be uh, given and that we're willing to pay for and the network performance. The security group here have launched Wizard One, the default security group that Amazon are going to provide us with. So when we click on launch, effectively what's going to happen here is it's moving from this concept of username and password, which is a two-stage authentication, to a three-stage authentication uh, with public-private key encryption. So username, password, and an encrypted key. We are going to choose a new key pair. We will select a phrase. We will then download what we term a, a PEM file. Um, within that, without, without getting overly complicated, we effectively will need to create a PPK key on our machine. Um, you can use an open source program such as PuttyGen. Once you create or import your PEM file, you'll be allowed to create your uh, PPK file. This now means you'll be allowed to log into the back end of the system and be able to change uh, write access, read access, permissions access, absolutely everything else. So very, very important that this key pair is kept safe and that you know how to access it effectively. Okay, so we've just launched uh, an instance. As you see on the screen behind us, it's it's ramping up as we speak. Um, the first one there is telling us the instance, instance is launching. Also, just be aware, the get notified of estimated charges, a very, very nice service that Amazon give you the option to sign up for. Uh, create billing alerts, give you some level of governance over effectively how the account has been run. The only proviso I would put into that is that you will be charged for it. So if you're trying to do up budgets and your budgets are quite tight, be a little bit careful. You can see what we're highlighting here. You get 10 alarms and you get 1,000 email notifications each month free. Uh, be careful, you will run through those uh, email notifications and alarms reasonably quickly on pretty generic information such as the network was a little slow today or you had X amount of people logging on, so on and so forth. So there may not be alerts in the way that you're, you're intending them to be. So just be careful of that from a budget perspective. Now what you can see here is that we have, in essence, two instances, one that I've terminated and the one that we're selecting now, uh, we're hoping to run. Um, you can see the, the micro instance, the availability zone is Ireland. Uh, where the cursor is highlighting now, you can just see the private DNS that Amazon is associating with us. You can see other details such as the public IP address, this IP address 54.72.60.69, you will be able to fully navigate to the website that we are going to be demonstrating on once the instance is still live. So that information is quite quite important. We will be mapping that public IP address uh, to, a, to a URL at a later stage. So once that's done, we have now just launched uh, the entire instance. So the server has been ramped up. The platform as a service is also now uh, in operation. You can see the IP address live at the top where the mouse cursor is hovering. And now we've just got an option straight away. We can just access our application. We can go into PHP My Admin, which facilitates some, some back-end work and some database um, creation, permissions, so on and so forth. Okay, so here's us launched into the user site. Uh, this is the content management system Joomla. And remember, there are two sites to this, the user side and the backend administration side. So this is a core template. We're now gonna have a look at the actual backend side where we're going to be figuring out what type of template we want and how we're going to actually manipulate that template, what type of extensions we want to use, uh, components, content, so on and so forth. So this is the back end that you see here now. This is the administrator view of the of the website. Um, we've got full facility to chop and change whatever we want, import templates, um, picture schemes, color schemes, font schemes, anything else like that. What we're going to do is we have uh, several files that we're going to import, which are going to be the Alexandria library files, which again, open source files, free to download and uh, free to plug into your Joomla system. So you go to uh, extensions, you navigate to your folder where you've saved your materials, 
you can see here we've got a, an ebook com zip file. We've got a few other files here as well that we'll be putting in, such as a comment uh, plugin, a load book, search for a book, uh, an XML map so that Google will be able to search your site. And we've got, um, we've got a catalog uh, file that we're going to import at a later stage. So we upload this file and we install. You can see the component was successfully installed. Uh, nice uh, message that's telling us that. Uh, if there's any issues, that message will go read quite quickly. So once that's done and the extensions have been loaded, now we're going to start having a look at the component side of things. Okay, so we're looking at the component side of things. We're in the Alexandria book library. We need to select control panel. Uh, this brings us up the panel whereby, in essence, it, it, it's given us the back end to the library. How many books do we have? How many categories, authors, libraries, editors, locations, so on and so forth. Okay, so on the category side of things, we need to specify, for a start, um, parent category and then the subcategories that we want to put in that. So, for example, a book category, uh, within book, fiction, non-fiction, so on and so forth. You can see in the top right hand corner that we actually have five categories and I've chosen a parent uh, just called the book category, uh, fiction category, historical fiction, non-fiction and science fiction. And there are my five categories. As we're adding books in later, I need to choose the category the book should be associated with. We have six books published to our website for public consumption. We'll show them in a minute. We have six authors to attach to each of the books we've published. We've specified one specific library. We've specified one location. There's absolutely no problem if your library has several locations. You can create within reason as many as you wish and then the books can also be associated to a specific location. Now we're looking at the add a new book side of things. Um, the tags here are pretty straightforward. What's your title? You can see the little asterisk there, so it's mandatory. We don't have a choice in the matter. Subtitle is optional. Within category, you, again, you need to choose your category, choose the editor of the book, choose the author of the book, which we need to have predefined before we actually add the book itself, so we're ready to select the author. We can have the a full bio of the author at this stage, we can have a picture for the author, so on and so forth. In the notes section, we literally just paste in the, the bio uh, or the synopsis of the book. The right hand side where the mouse cursor is moving now, the, the specific details of the book we're looking at, the year of publication, what location, so what branch of the library we're looking at, what's the library name, price of book, pages, ISBN, and again we can upload cover details here, so a, a, an image, a front cover for the book. The external URL will let us link to pretty much any website we want. Uh, the example I've used, we've linked to Amazon a few times um, and, and that, will, that will come up in the demonstration. So again, just some of the other categories, new author, authors, so on and so forth. So let's look at the import-export uh, option within the component. Really quite important, it for a start allows us to export uh, or back up a copy of all the, the records we have within our database. We could have tens of thousands of books, this is absolutely critical. We can back it up either in a MySQL, i.e. a database format, or a CSV Excel style format. We can also import uh, thousands and thousands of records at one go if we so wish. Again, either in database format uh, or in CSV format. Once the import is done, we're now just moving to the front end. So this is what the actual users are going to see. You can see the Alexandria Book Library there, my parent category uh, of books. We've got fiction, historical fiction, non-fiction and science fiction. The numbers beside it correspond to the number of books that I've entered. So if we click on fiction, scroll down, we can see we've got Dan Brown, uh, we've got a book as well by Adam Johnson, The Orphan Master's Son, and I've imported various details on these books that I've uh, borrowed thanks to the Amazon website. So all the details are here, we've got a little bit of blurb on what the book is about, a little bit on the author, we can, if we want to purchase it, it's a link straight to the Amazon website, if we uh, double click on it, we will link across the Amazon website, and it gives you pretty much whatever you want to see, pages, ISBN, and straight into the Amazon website if you want to purchase. Now let's go back uh, to our own website, 
again we will see just a quick example of the uh, non-historic okay fiction so if we click back and follow the mouse cursor we'll move up to sorry historical fiction and within that you'll see we've got a book here by a young author from the states called Mary Beth Keane recently published a, a, a book called Fever okay and again all the details in here so now uh, we pretty much have had a look at the SAAS uh, side of things, the software as a service from the, the Joomla side. So a quick recap as to where we've come from to be able to get this far. If we just go back, we'll see that we launched on the AWS cloud. We launched an instance, so we launched a server in the cloud, which was IAAS. We've got all our details here for public and uh, private IPs, elastic IPs, DNS addresses, absolutely everything. RAM amounts that we have, a number of elastic compute units. That is our infrastructure as a service. That is what the elasticity says. If we want to ramp this up to be able to have 80,000 people checking out in an hour, a la a, a Ticketmaster style site, this is exactly where we ramp up our services. So we move on from there to a platform as a service where we have launched the Linux and Joomla, and that's the software in essence on our server. We go from the platform to the SAAS, in this case, we're now looking at the extensions that we've plugged in for the library, uh, in our case, the Alexandra library system. Once that is done, again, there are numerous options. If you look down at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see in Italian there, uh, Denose, or donations. We can set up a full payment system on this with an accounting back-end system, uh, with a fine system, with a talk to the librarian. We have got options to do pretty much uh, whatever the plugins will facilitate. If, if we want to set up transactional-based material, we'll go off to a company like Relex, uh, we'll get the account details set up with them. They'll manage all the banking side of things. We'll be able to do loads of microtransactions, one, two, three euro fines, so on and so forth. One of the important things to take from this demonstration is bar for the circa 10 to $15 a month, every other piece of software that we've used for this demonstration is absolutely open source and free for, for every one of you guys uh, to, to take home with you and just mess around with and see how it goes. So thank you very much for, for, for looking at the presentation and we can have a quick discussion now and we'll go through a, a Q&A session.